Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're not going to have a live stream. I have to prepare to leave for Narcon tomorrow night. My cats are making a mess back there. <laughs> you can see a sneak peek of a model I'm working on right there. Almost as tall as I am. Yeah, that's Luby Sorceress. But anyway, today we're going to show you how to make complex multi-surface connected structures using vase mode. And we're going to do it in Tinkercad. So stay tuned. <laughs> So, you want to make a complex shape like this, a nose cone, but you need structure on the inside. You need some kind of substance on the inside of the nose cone so that it's stronger. Because if you did this just as a single perimeter vase all the way up, it's not going to be very strong. It'll be light, but it won't be strong. And you can apply this to almost any shape. So, I'm going to show you the trick with making a multi-surface model a single surface model. Meaning, one continuous path connects all these surfaces together and works in vase mode. So stay tuned as we jump right into Tinkercad and I show you how to do this. Okay, so here we are in Tinkercad and we want to make ourselves a nose cone. I actually have a specific nose cone in mind. I want to make another T300 nose cone for the three inch body tube I tend to fly. Let's see here. We're gonna start off, I usually start off oddly enough with a sphere or a half sphere. Does the sphere let me, yes, the sphere lets me control the number of steps. So I can make slightly higher resolution parts with a sphere. So the first thing we need to do is cut the sphere in half. It is 20 tall. So I'm going to make a box 10 tall. Do it right at the beginning. This way it's easy. There we go. And we're going to chop our sphere in half. Because we need a nose cone, not a sphere. We also need to make the shoulder of the nose cone. So for that we're going to need a cylinder. I always go to my maximum number of sides. Now for this particular shoulder, we need a 74.39 millimeter size. 74.39, I've already measured my parts, this is how I know this. 74.39, okay, so there's the shoulder. And we also know that this is going to have to be 76.2. So we have our basic shapes coming into form here. Okay. So shoulder. You want the bottom of the nose cone to have a bit of a bevel here. That makes it a lot easier to insert that nose cone into a body tube. So if it's unusually tight or if you have a little bit of a flange or elephant's foot, it won't matter because that little bevel is smaller than the body tube and the nose cone slips right into place, no problem. So that makes that very easy to do. We also need to do something similar to create a bevel here so that you can actually have the transition from the shoulder to the um, proper nose cone itself. And that is because of the thickness of the tube. So the shoulder needs to be smaller than the tube, the ID of the tube, to fit inside. But the outside needs to have the same as the OD, or outside diameter, of the tube so that when they join together, they have a nice flush joint. So this here, what I found to do is start off relatively short at a bevel. Okay. You might have to start off taller. Just add a bevel. Yeah. Okay, so once you have any kind of a bevel, now when you reshape the part, you're reshaping the bevel. So now we make this really tall. See how the bevel's getting taller? See how we're starting to get a nice bevel there? And... Just keep making it as tall as you need to to get the bevel you want. I like that. So now we gotta chop this thing down. Bring in your square again, your cut square. And bring it all the way up. And that looks like a decent shoulder there. This is just seat of the pants. If this shoulder isn't long enough, the nose cone will tend to wobble inside the tube. So making it longer gives you a smoother fit, but also uses more material, so it's kind of a balance, okay? I'm gonna make it a little longer than I want because I'm also gonna shorten that. So now I'm going to make sure it covers the entire tube all around, it almost doesn't cover that edge, okay? Now I'm gonna duplicate this because I have to chop off the top part too. 
And I'm going to bring it up to about where I want to get my bevel, and then I'm going to invert it. See, so in Tinkercad, you have these points here that allow you to grab both X and Y at the same time, and then you have these black points in between that allow you to grab just one axis. So if I grab this white um, anchor point here, I can change the dimensions on both ways. See, I can adjust both X and Y. But if I grab this black point here, I only change the one dimension. So in this case, X. Now you also have a point here that allows you to change the height of the item. And then you also have this point here, this cone, that allows you to move the entire object. Now, if you want to move the entire object on X or Y, you grab the object and you shift key. So that'll lock you into either X or Y, depending on which way you move. So if I grab this and move it, I can move it non-linearly anywhere I want. And that's a problem if you're trying to adjust a shape. So you grab it here and hold the shift key, and now it'll lock into X or it'll lock into Y. So that's just some movement tools. Now, if you invert the object, if you rotate down so you're looking at the bottom, it gives you those same points, the cone to move it up and down, and the, um, the white mark in the center to change the height. We're going to change the height and invert it. See how I'm pushing up? Now I'm going to push up and pass zero and go the other way. I just inverted the box. So now I cut it on both sides. And I actually think that is too tall. So I'm going to come up here and grab this point and make it a little taller. And that I like for my shoulder. I'm going to extend this down past zero just to make sure it actually cuts the nose cone. Join all three pieces together. And boom. We now have a shoulder for the nose cone. Let's rotate it 180 degrees since that is the bottom of the nose cone. Now when you drag and move something, so when I grab the cone and I move it, Okay, see this marker here? That's not, the, that's not the height of the part. The height of the part is here from its previous location. But this here, that big number there, is the height above the work plane. So to keep everything on an even plane, we're going to move that to zero, which puts it directly on top of the print bed, directly on top of the work plane. And now I can tell that this object is 27.99 tall. We're going to make that 28 just to keep the number simple. Now, the cone is going to sit on top of that. So we're going to raise the cone to 28. I'm going to actually raise it to 27.99 because I want the two parts to actually mesh together. Highlight them both. Click my align tool and center them. There. Now I have a nose cone sitting on top of a shoulder, but I have that hard right angle edge. That hard right angle edge is no good. We need to get rid of that. And I also want to make this nose cone a bit taller. I want a taller nose cone. Did I move that? No, I didn't. There we go. I'm going to stretch that up. Okay, how tall do I want to make it? I guess a 300 millimeter nose cone would be nice. Uh, 225 is actually looking pretty good for that shape. I like that. I'm going to stick with that. I'm a little shorter. Yeah, right there. So this is just cosmetic. It's what you like. It's whatever you want. So I'm just going to choose to make that one a little taller, about like that. Okay. We're also going to fix the tip. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay. So now I'm going to hide this. Hit that little um, light bulb, and it makes it go away. I'm going to grab my work plane, put it on top here. So now my work plane is the top of the shoulder. I could bring that back by hitting the other light bulb on the top there. So now I have a work plane here, because we need to make a shoulder, a shoulder interface. So 76.2, we're going to take a cone, increase the number of sides. We're going to make that cone 76.2, 76.2. Okay, we are definitely going to need it to be taller, because we want to have, I'm going to give it a top radius, so I don't have to make it so tall. See, if I give it a top radius, I don't have to make it so bloody tall. Okay. We're going to take this. We're going to rotate it. 180 degrees. 18 tall, so we're going to go to negative 18. Now, that brings it to the bottom of the nose cone. Slide that bad boy in there. Align everything. So, we're going to center, center, 
and there you go. See, now I have an interface between the one part and the second part, but that's a little too big. So I'm going to bring it up. As long as you keep it about 45 degrees, it'll print fine. There we go. Now I have a nice interface between the two parts. To make sure these parts are actually going to merge together, I am going to drop this part a tiny bit. So I'm going to drop it negative 0 0.02, just to make sure those parts are actually touching. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to join them. I don't need to make a, a, a separate shoulder for this cone because I'm going to use a 1.2 millimeter nozzle to print it. So it's going to be a pretty thick cone. It'll be more than structurally sound. It'll also have infill to allow me to attach things to it. Now, here's the tricky part. To make this completely vase mode printable, I have to make some modifications here. See this part here, this section right here? That should print okay. So I shouldn't need any kind of um, changes to my nose cone to print that. Although I think I might do something in between this and this. This here will not print. That would require either infill, multiple perimeters, some kind of change. So I want to get rid of that part, but I want to still keep it a cone. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to put a box down inside the object partially. And we're going to lift that box all the way up here. Uh-oh. I don't know what I just did. Oh, this stupid freaking... The, um, my mouse has back buttons and I just hit that back button. <laughs> That's annoying. And we're back. So I'm going to bring this box until it's inside of the nose cone. This way I can see where it touches. I'm going to change my snap grid to 0.1 millimeter. Change my viewpoint to give me a better angle. There we go. Now what I need to do is I need to bring, see that? I need to make this top about the top of that. All right. Now, <coughs> there is a way to get the exact dimension and we're gonna do that right now, just so you guys know how to do it. I need to bring this up just a hair more. So we're going to go to snap grid off, which gives you like a 0.01 resolution to your dragging right there. Okay. So now the, the, the only reason this is here is to act as a work plane adjustment. Okay. So now I can put a work plane on top of here. I can put a clear box on top of here. I can drag that inverted. You'll see why in a moment. Now, of course, I need to make the box as big as the nose cone like that now I'm going to duplicate the nose cone control D now the nose cone is still selected I'm going to select shift and select my box I'm going to join them now my note I can move this aside now because now that's at the right altitude but I'll leave it there in case I ever need it now I have a separate little piece here see the whole reason I want that piece is I need to know how big it is so that piece is 19.77 so I'm going to write that down 19.77 now you can actually put it aside if you think you might need it later. So let's go back, put it back in place, and we'll just drift it over here. This way if I ever need it, it's there. We're now going to take a cone and put it directly on top of here and size it to 19.77. So that it will exactly match the piece we just cut it from. And then we're going to center those. Center and center. Those are now melded together. There. Oh, no, I forgot. Leave them on, go back. We have to change the shape of the cone. That's way too tall. <laughs> so this cone is actually going to have more sides, of course, and it's going to have a slight top radius just because that's easier to print. And now we shrink it down until we get about the same angle as the rest of that wall. There. So now we have the continuation of the nose cone tip. Let's make that top radius a one. And we don't quite go to a point. And that's to account for our top layers. Okay. 
So now we have a proper nose cone we can join together. I am satisfied with that shape. Put the work plane back down. That shape looks good to me. So now we have a nice little nose cone that we can print in vase mode in its entirety. Okay. So now I want to add structure to the nose cone, but retain vase mode. Here's how we're going to do that. We don't need these anymore, so I'm going to delete them. I'll just hide them. Just in case I need them to modify something. So, take the nose cone. Okay. First thing we're going to do is duplicate the nose cone. Now, there's two ways you could do internal structure. You can just have ribs going throughout the entire nose cone, which is easy enough to do. Or we can also do um, a double wall like this, which is actually lighter and stronger. So this actually takes less material. It sounds counterintuitive, but it does. The, the actual ribs take more material than the nose cone itself. Slightly more. Okay, so first thing, <laughs> we need to create the double wall. I've duplicated the nose cone. We've changed the color. So as you can see, we have two of them now. We have the blue one and the yellow one. Now, the double wall itself, not so important how big or how shaped that is. So I am going to literally just shrink this cone. Shift. Now, I hold shift. Okay, when you grab a control point, you move just the axes that that control point controls. So this one controls Z. This one controls X and Y together. The black ones control either X or Y. Now, if you grab any of these points and hit shift, it controls all three together and you scale the entire model together. I would really love it if they would give me a percentage when I did this. So now I'm going to switch back to the blue one, make it clear, and see, now we can see the nose cone on the inside. Can we grab that yellow one? Yes, we can. So I'm going to shrink that down until I like the wall thickness between the two. So down here, I like my wall separation there. But now I'm going to stretch the nose cone taller to reduce how much veinage I need on the inside until it's all about the same. Yeah, see how the wall thickness is about the same all the way through? Again, this is not super critical, but there we go. Now I change the yellow into a hole, and I change my, and I'm going to hide the yellow, and I change this back to blue. Now, it's important that we don't move these yet. Oh, actually, it doesn't matter. We're going to center them. So grab them both. Um, when you hide something, it is not included in your operations. So you have to unhide it to include it in your operations. So now our transparent one is visible again. Okay. Now, since I adjusted this with the center point, it's probably already centered. And yes, it is already centered. Okay. So let's push. Oh, I just want to move these out of the way. Get you guys out of my way. Okay. So now we're going to come in here and we're going to... Oh, we don't need to do that yet, actually. Okay. Now, grab your nose cone and duplicate it. Control D. Shift it aside. Okay. So we're going to do operations on that. I could swear I just... Oh, this light turned off. Oh, battery died. Okay. <laughs> I could swear a light to my left turned off, and it did. This little light here turned off. <laughs> now, this nose cone, we're going to squish it, because we're going to use it to create veins. And I'm going to explain those veins in a second here. So, to understand how vase mode works. Vase mode works by having a continuous path. So, if you have a large circle here, and you have a circle on the inside you have two different surfaces, okay? Now, how do I make those surfaces join together so that they're one continuous surface? You put a cut in it. You cut a slot between the inside and the outside surface. Now you've made it one continuous path. It can draw the outside, move in, draw the inside, move back out, and continue drawing the outside. In, out, in, out, and you have vase mode. Now, what if you want more structure than that? If you just have a simple shape, you can do that. You can just put a, cut, put a cut right through it and you're done. Now, And we're going to do that. But we need more cuts because we want these little veins, these ribs that connect the inside and the outside surface together. Because without those ribs, we don't get the strong structure. We get two 
independent structures connected by a single rib. So the trick with those is you have to put more cuts. The problem is if you put more cuts, you're creating now individual islands. So you have this shape and this shape and this shape and this shape and this shape. That's not vase mode compatible. It needs to be a continuous path. So the trick is this cut here, it cuts the inside surface, but it does not cut the outside surface. It stops short of the outside surface. By stopping short of the outside surface, it can now draw from outside, from outside to inside, and then from inside almost to the outside, back to the inside again, continue around, almost to the outside, back to the inside again, continue around. So we need to make a cut tool that's going to cut slots between the two surfaces, but that doesn't touch the outside surface. How far off? Number one, it has to be precise through the entire object. You can go less and no problem, but then the rib won't actually touch the outside surface. And if the rib doesn't touch the outside surface, <laughs> you don't get the connection. You don't get the strength increase. Now, I am going to be printing this with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. Now, technically, to form a complete, a slot can be zero size. So, when I make my two circles and I connect them with a slot, that slot can be basically zero dimension. It could be 0.1 millimeters, and that's what I use. I use 0.1 millimeters because it's a path, and it will draw the path. The filament will be on the inside of the path, so the slot will be on the outside of the path. But when you draw an outside and an inside, and you need to connect them, technically the path looks like that. So it actually has to have some width in order for it to consider it something it can draw, which means the gap between the inside and the outside surface has to be two times your nozzle width. I'm going to be using a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. So this gap needs to be 2.4 millimeters so that when it draws that object, the two paths will touch enough because I'm going to over extrude. I'm going to extrude like at like 1.0 or 1.1, which is a little bit more plastic than you need. So that over extrusion will cause those two parts to actually touch. But in the slicer, there are two discrete paths. So double your nozzle width or the gap between. And here's how we do that. We literally take the nose cone and we squish it to 0 0.1 there. See? Now we have a little cut plane that we can use to chop the model. So when I turn this into a cut, I can bisect the model in half. But now we need to adjust this. And we can't resize it. Because when you resize an object, you skew the object. Let me show you. So if I take this object here, notice its shape. If I scale the object on all three dimensions, the shape stays the same. It just gets bigger or smaller. Okay? But if I just grab one dimension, you can see that's no longer a cone shape. That's a hemisphere shape. And anything in between is between cone and hemisphere. So I can't resize the part. I have to move the part. Because if there's any skew your distance gap between the two parts will change. Now remember we did the inside cone and we didn't do that. That's okay though, because the inside surface and the outside surface don't have to be the exact shape. But your ribs that you put in must be the exact same shape, just linearly shifted over 2.4 millimeters. So the way we do that, so we make this solid again. Oh, let me make sure I undid that, yes. Make sure I undid my changes to the cone. I'm going to move this over here to make it easier for us to work with. Now, the way we're going to do that is to take this shape and bisect it in two. So we're going to put a block through it. Make that block as tall as the nose cone. Get it approximately in the center. It doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be close. Make sure it's just big enough to cover the entire half of the nose cone. Now we're gonna make it a specific size. We're gonna make it 45 because we have to make two boxes and they have to be exactly the same size. So select the box, control D. Now we have two boxes. We're gonna do another inversion. I'm gonna grab the um, X-axis 
single point, the black point here, and we're going to shift this over until we invert it and it goes the other way. And then we're going to change this to 45. So now we have two 45 millimeter wide boxes. That's important because now we're going to join those two boxes together into one box. Now because they're exactly the same size, they have a middle and that middle is also going to be the middle of the nose cone because we're now going to align them. Select them both, align tool, align them on the that axis, the axis that you're bisecting on. Then we're going to separate the two boxes again. So now we once again have two boxes and they are the, the line, the joint between those two boxes is the exact center of the nose cone and that's what we need. So here's the next trick. We hide one of the boxes. We select the nose cone. We duplicate it. Control D, change its color yellow. Shift, select the last visible box. Join. We have now cut the yellow nose cone in half. We're going to unhide to bring our part back, which brings us the other box. We're going to select the box, and we're going to select the other half, the blue nose cone. And we're going to do a cut. Now we have the exact same nose cone we had before, but it's technically two pieces. That's where the magic comes in. Because I have to move this nose cone piece left... And here you see that little measurement that comes up. This is something somebody online showed me that finally allows me to do exact movements. That's a relative motion from this line here. That made it go away. So I'm going to do it again. That's an exact relative motion from this line here where it started to this line where it is. We're going to make it 2.4. Okay. Then we're going to grab this one and do the same thing. Move it to the right. Now notice this is a negative number. Negative 2.4. So now I've taken the yellow right half and shifted it left 2.4 millimeters and the blue left half and shifted it right 2.4 millimeters. I can now join those two together. Now I have a nose cone that is exactly 2.4 millimeters smaller than the other no the original nose cone on each side while maintaining the exact shape of the nose cone. Now this does create a small issue up here which we're going to get rid of. Uh, we'll get rid of that later, but we gotta we gotta chop off this little bit up here. Okay, but you see that line right there? That's the part of our nose cone that we added up here, and we know that part conveys mode print, so that's okay. We don't need that part. Now here's the cool part: because this part is symmetrical, and because this part is exactly the same shape, just shifted to the nose cone, I can now do a duplicate rotate and center it inside the nose cone, and that will actually work. So, to duplicate an object and have it do it for you, I want um, six ribs. So, I believe that's 60 degrees I need to move, I think. Or is that 30 degrees? Might be 30 degrees. Okay, so, Control D to duplicate. Grab the little control horn here. See that little control horn that allows me to rotate the object? And pick a dimension. I believe it is 30 degrees. No, it might be 60. It is 60. Um, this is a three inch nose cone, so I think that will be enough ribs. So we're going to go to exactly 60 and let go. One single operation. Do not touch anything else. Now hit Control D again. It will do it again for you to the exact same dimensions. So now we have our six ribs that are going to be on the inside of the nose cone. And I'm not sure if that's enough. So I'm going to grab all of them. Control D and rotate 30 degrees. There. Now we have 12 ribs. Although we don't need that. This is a 1.2 millimeter extrusion. It's going to be more than strong enough. Technically, I don't need any ribs at all. It's going to be such a strong part. But this is just to show you guys how to do this, how to make these complex shapes. Okay? So here we have all of our ribs. Now we have to do something a little special later on. But first, we're going to join these together. We're going to make them a hole. But before we do that, we need to clip off the top. If your shape doesn't have a cross intersecting part at the top, you don't have to do this. So make it solid again. Put down a box right about in the center. Drag that box up here. And we're just going to nip off that little naughty part at the top there.
We're going to have to do that again later. I'll explain why, but you'll see in a moment. So now we have our nose cone. Turn it into a hole. Drag it over here. Put it inside of our nose cone. And then select everything and center and align everything. There we go. So now, here's the cool part. Let me change the shape of this so you can see it. See? So now we have our nose cone. And we have these veins that go almost all the way to the outside of the nose cone. And we have that inner hollow to make the inside of the nose cone hollow. Okay? So let me undo that. So now we have all of our shapes together, but we still need to connect the inside with the outside. So that's where we grab one of these and we move them. So we're gonna hide that part. We're gonna hide our outer cone. We wanna not do that. Hide, not this, there it is. Inner cone, hide that. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna break it apart again, okay? And I'm gonna take one of these that's on an axis. This one right here, okay? We're gonna duplicate it, and then we're gonna stretch. Oh, are these still joined? I think these are still joined. Yeah, they're still joined. Yeah, see how big they are? There we go, now we only have one. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate one of them, and I'm going to shift it to the right. 2.97 millimeters, that's fine. Okay? Just enough to go outside the skin of the rocket. Now I can rejoin all these. Don't move anything now. You can't move anything because now it's no longer symmetrical. So if you move it, you won't be able to recenter it. Make it a hollow again. Make my rest of my parts come back, see? See now how I have this little slice coming out of the nose cone? That bisects the inside and outside surface and makes them one. Okay? So this would actually be a better technique for if you wanted to make this kind of a nose cone with a smaller nozzle. If you wanted to make it with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, then I would make that shift that we did to move the parts 0.8 millimeters double a 0.4 millimeter nozzle um, but we are already in the process here so we're going to leave it so now we're done we have our hollowed out center and we have our ribs that will give us the strength to connect the inside and the outside surface together and we have our bisection that joins the inside and outside surface you can actually see that on this one here you can see right there there's my seam where it actually goes inside to draw the inside part in the ribs, then it comes back outside and finishes off the nose cone. All we have to do now is join everything together. It's thinking. It's thinking and thinking and thinking. Why didn't that work? I think it did, but I think the inside nose cone needs to come down a tiny bit. I think the inside nose cone was hidden. Yeah, that was the problem. So, oh, it's a solid. I don't want that. It's got to be a hollow. That's my bad. Okay. We're going to bring it down just a hair anyway. Just a hair. Where am I getting these extra cones? I think I have more parts here than I should. There we go. Grab this. Bring it down just a hair. That also needs to be a hole. Oh, I never rejoined these. Or I accidentally duplicated it. This all needs to be holes. So the only thing not a hole is the blue part. Now I join everything together. There we go. Come on, think about it.
There we go. See? Now we have a hollowed out nose cone with a top and a bottom. And you can see the little ribs. See those little ribs that go almost all the way to the outside, except for this one, which goes all the way to the outside. And that gives us our hollowed out nose cone. So, export this. STL. Fantabulous Hango Amberus. <laughs> you can change the name of that to anything you want. So now we're going to bring up Simplify 3D. Hello, a million times. We are going to bring up the Chiron since it has the 1.2 millimeter nozzle. No save. We are going to change it to 001 single perimeter. We're going to use a 1.0 extrusion multiplier to make sure the two surfaces touch. And now we bring up the file. That's fantabulous. There it is. So now we have our T300 nose cone. <coughs> As you can see, we have our slots in there. And now, in theory, if I did all this right, it will print in vase mode. Show retractions. Show travel moves. I do not see any extraneous retractions or travel moves. It worked. How cool is that? Although I don't think it was supposed to go all the way to the top. I'll have to check that. I thought I clipped that off. Oh, because I duplicated the file accidentally and I just made everything a whole, so part of it wasn't clipped. That's no big deal. Okay. Now if you look at the slice, no retractions. <coughs> See this green blob right here? That indicates a retraction. And of course that's jumping from the skirt to the model. So as you can see, retract from the skirt, jump to the model, begin printing the vase mode, and we have no issue. There is no connection. <coughs> so this entire model will print in vase mode all the way up to the top, no retractions. There we go. A couple of retractions up top because I bisected the cone on all four sides. That's just because I forgot to clip it. I can show you that real quick where we made that mistake. Yeah, see. <laughs> so, this needs to be joined to this. Then we need to hide this. Yeah, I accident at some point I accidentally duplicated everything. I don't know how I did that. So, we're going to hide this. Oh yeah, there we go. These are the duplicates right here. Delete you. Delete all those extras. I accidentally duplicated everything at some point. I don't know how I did that. I don't want to get rid of all of it. I just want to get rid of these extras. Anyway, you see what I did. I accidentally duplicated the cone. So I didn't I didn't get that crop top that I needed. I can just re-add it. I deleted it, so it's gone. Okay, that's fine. So except for that little tip there, that this, this is why you have to crop that tip like I did. Because otherwise, your cuts go all the way to the top, and eventually they get too close to the inside, and it can't get rid of it. So you just crop off that little tip. Okay, But as you can see, the rest of the nose cone is all base mode. The whole entire thing. And this nose cone will print in 2 hours and 14 minutes. And that's with two 1.2 millimeter thick walls. That's going to be one very strong nose cone. And you can do this for other shapes very easily as well. So say you wanted to make a box. Okay. And you wanted that box to have an inside and an outside. Let's make a 40 by 40 by 20 is fine. So now we take another box. Let me put it inside that first box. Now, how thick do we want the bottom to be? Let's say we want the bottom to be three layers with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So that's 0 0.6. No, 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 no. Wrong dimension. Yeah, 0 0.6. I did it right. So, 0 0.6. That'll give me three bottom layers. Now, this box here is 40 by 40. We have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. We need, um, we want to have how thick a wall? A 0.4 millimeter wall, or no, I'm, let's have an inside. 
So let's make it 30. There we go. So 30 by 30. Now because these are squares, we can center them. So now we have a, a 30 millimeter cutout inside the box, all right? Make that a hole, join them together. So now what if we want to print this box in vase mode? Well, we need to bisect the box. Now, interestingly enough, this box has corners, so we can bisect it on the corners. So all we have to do is take another box, rotate it 45 degrees, Before we rotate it, make the box big enough to do what we need. Because otherwise it gets hard to rotate. Because you can't really, oh sorry, 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Then we rotate it 45 degrees. Now we can actually center this inside the box. Since it is... A asymmetric shape. See how it bisects the box like that? Okay. Now we need to shift it. So we're going to put a work plane on the shape we just created so that we can shift this shape sideways. We want to shift that shape sideways so that this edge here is inside this empty space. Put the work plane back. Now we need to lift this shape up 0 0.6 so that we're not bisecting our bottom layers, okay? Now we also wanna create a solid top layer for this box. So we're gonna take this number of top layers, so this is 20 millimeters tall. So we have to make this shorter than 20 millimeters by the number of top layers we want, okay? Now I want this to be, um, I'm gonna put four top layers to make sure we get a nice solid top, so that is um, 0.8 if you're using 0 0.2 millimeter layers. So we want this to be 19.2 There Okay Now we Join it together and now we've just created a slot inside the box Right in the corner. So the seam is going to be hidden. So vase cube We're gonna name it vase cube. We're gonna export this and I'll show you how it works in the slicer you get a kick out of this. Switch back to Simplify 3D. Go to File, New. Nope, 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 cancel. File, New. No, we don't want to save. We're going to use a standard printer's build volume. So let's use the Ender 5. Nope, we're not going to save the Chiron settings. Um, we are going to bump this up to 0.94, which is my normal setting for this printer. We're going to go four top layers, three bottom layers, one perimeter, single outline corkscrew mode. Okay. Now we're going to change that in a moment. We'll, I'll show you how we do this complicated um, extrusions. Now we bring in our box. That was vase mode box. Vase cube. Okay. Now with those settings alone, we have our box. Yes. So there we go. Are we on? Yeah, okay. So there we go. As you can see, we have our bottom layers, which are solid. So they are not broken up because we did not, we raised that cube up. Okay. Then we have our little bisect right here that goes outside to inside and gives us the inside of the box. And then that cut stops at the top it should there it goes I must have not made it short enough oh that's right I lifted it up so we only have two top layers that's fine that's fine I could fix that actually let's fix that so this needs to be just a hair shorter um, it's 19.2 but then I lifted it the bottom three layers so I need to bring it down to 18.8. .8. Now I can join it together. And then we export our box.
Move back out of here, get rid of the box, grab the vase cube one. There. Now, as you can see, solid, 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 solid vase. And now we're vase mode. All the way down. Isn't that cool? Now, I want this box to be stronger. With a 0.4 millimeter wall, it's not going to be very strong. So you guys get bonus content today. This is a long video. So we need to create multiple processes. Control V, V, V. So now I have, actually, we can do this an easier way. Go into Tools, Variable Settings Wizard. Now we know the first split is going to be at 0 0.6. So we're going to say Add a Location There. And we know the other split is going to be at 19.2. Two, four, six, eight. Yes, we're going to add a split there. Okay, split process. So now this first process we want at 0 0.94, and we want our four top layers and our four bottom layer, three bottom layers, and we do not want single outline corkscrew. We want three perimeters. Okay, that's just the first 0 0.6 millimeters of the model. Then we now the second part here is the vase mode part. We're going to bump this up to 1.1. Go to 1.2. That's going to give us a nice thick extrusion. Leave this all the same, except we have single outline corkscrew mode. Except this is going to have zero top and zero bottom, because this is just that center section. Okay. See, starts at 0 0.6, ends at 19.2. Then process three, we're going back down to our 0 0.94, back down to our three perimeters. There's a reason that won't work, and I'll show you how to fix that. Okay, three perimeters, um, top and bottom layers, no single outline corkscrew, proper extrusion. What we are going to do now, hit OK, layer. Now what layer height will that be? That's going to be at 19.2. So we go into a calculator, 19.2 divided by 0 0.2 is layer 96. So we're going to go into process 2 under layers, or I'm sorry, additions, infill, infill. Include a solid diaphragm every 96 or 92? 96. Every 96 layers. Okay. That'll give me a solid diaphragm because remember, we're starting with single perimeter. And then we're going to three perimeters. The problem is those two inside perimeters have nothing to attach to because it's hollow. So we're going to create a solid diaphragm at that layer point. Now we can print all three of these processes. We're going to do a continuous printing there. Now, so here we get our single perimeter with a diaphragm across it. See? So that now when the next layer prints its three perimeters, it has something to sit on. See? This the red part here is the inside. Go away. Are you serious? Did you actually just do that? <sighs> so now we have single perimeter connected. Okay, even if it connects sloppy, it's fine. But now when we go to layer 97 and switch over to three perimeters, there's something for it to actually attach to. See? And we get our nice clean solid layers. If we tried to print these solid layers at the 1.2 extrusion multiplier, they'd be sloppy because you're over extruding. And because the layer is complete, there's no place for the plastic to go. So you end up with you know, a big elephant's foot at the top and the bottom and this, it bulging and your top surface is going to be nasty and dirty. This allows us to create a very lightweight box that uses 5 grams of plastic and prints in 33 minutes. <laughs> So this is a 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter box that's going to actually be strong because we're printing at 1.2 extrusion multiplier in vase mode and it's going to print in 33 minutes and weigh 5 grams. That's pretty cool. This does not need a skirt, so I'm going to get change it from skirt to, um, from brim to skirt. There we go. Print, select all, go. There we go. Now we don't have that connection in between. And I'm going to print this and show it to you guys once it's done printing because it prints so fast, why not? So stay tuned. Here you can see it's printing the box in vase mode. One continuous extrusion there, just move to the inside, print the inside. That's gonna move to the outside and print the outside. 
and that's going to move back to the inside. Pretty darn cool. Here is our vase cube box, and as you can see, it looks absolutely stunning. Almost flawless. That's the advantage of vase mode. And because we did a 1.2 millimeter extrusion, it's nice and strong. This isn't weak. This isn't going to come apart in your hands. You know, you can squeeze this. You know, it's a decently strong box. It looks like I'm over extruding a tiny bit. I'll probably bump that down to 0.9 the next time I do it. Can you tell where the seam is? Where it goes from inside to outside? You can if you look carefully. See it? Oop. See that right there? That little double seam? You can just barely tell it's there. There's a regular seam. There's the double seam. And this wasn't printed slow. This is printed at 50 millimeters a second. Pretty darn cool. Next up, I'll show you the nose cone. There you go. Nose cone is finished 100% in vase mode. No process is necessary. I also made a small addition after I left you guys in the video. I added a shock cord mount. The way I did that was I put a 5 millimeter cylinder here and I connected it, I bridged it to here with a, um, a 0.8 millimeter thick wall and um, I just made sure that this cylinder and wall was a cutout of our center cylinder so that it ended up being solid when we're finished. And so the vase mode would come in from the outside, do each of these ribs, and then when it got to here, it would go out and do this little circle, come back and then continue making the ribs. This way, the little shock cord mount, you'd stick your shock cord through here and tie it down, would attach the nose cone to the rest of the, um, would attach the shock cord mount to the rest of the nose cone without breaking vase mode. There you go. That's pretty darn cool. I do wish Tinkercad allowed a few more polygons here. 64 is not enough, or however many there is on here, it's not enough. I wish they would double, at least double it. But there you go. And you can see the tip printed well. No issues there. There we go. Our tip printed clean. No problem. I'm going to probably shorten that a tiny bit. Because you see it's starting to get a little heat damage there. No big deal. It almost completed. So I'll knock another millimeter off of that. But there you go. These files are available for you to print on Thingiverse. And the factory files are there as well so you can play around with them if you want. I also made a vase mode printable cap for this. So a lid that is actually also hollow. So you could print out the lid for the box as well. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, ask down below. I'd be more than happy to help as best I can. And a little sneak peek. I got the head printed. I am missing six millimeters right here. So I gotta print a six millimeter section to fill that in correctly. So that should be lifted up six millimeters. A little section goes there. And the arms are printing right now. So that's it. Um, assuming nothing goes wrong, I'll be at Murph. And you'll be able to see the sorceress there at Murph, life-size. So you guys have a great day. And thank you for watching.